Hey there guys, today we're going to be doing something a little different and we're going to be doing a full DCC sound install on the new Broadway Limited Stealth Series SPSD40. Now why did I choose this locomotive? Well, when you're sitting on about six or seven Atherns, it's kind of nice to get a little variety and see what else is out there. So, we're going to take this engine apart, see what it involves to get it apart. You know, got a Lockdown 5, 21 pin ready to go, and the new speaker from Broadway Limited. So, in theory, this should be a pretty simple install. So, you're going to find out and learn as I do with this locomotive. So, I'm not going to waste too much time talking. I'll put timestamps in the video to break it apart. Before we get too deep in the video, I want to give a special thanks to my local hobby shop, Hayes Hobby House in Fayetteville, North Carolina, for number one, ordering me the locomotive, but number two, let me commandeer the workbench while we put sound on this guy for a little while. So, shouldn't be too hard of a process, fingers crossed, and we will see from there. Alright, so let's get cooking. Now before we get too deep into it, of course, I'm going to get a foam cradle, place the locomotive in it, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of where things are at on the locomotive. Alright, now with the camera focused down, I'll show you. All you need is a Phillips head to undo the coupler, both front and rear. So that's just one screw, you know, pull the box, pull the coupler, and you'll be in business. Uh, one thing they did not mention in the manual, and I noticed this by looking and having worked on a few Broadway lim Limited locomotives, the shell release tabs are kind of hidden on the inside of the truck. So I'll take the screwdriver and point right there. So what I'm going to do for this is either toothpicks, I've got a couple flathead screwdrivers here, and just kind of pop them to the side very gently to pry the shell out and we will be good to go. But like I said, you guys are going to learn as I do, so we're going to see what method works best in this locomotive. Alright, engine's in the cradle. Let's rock and roll. Get the rear and then the front. So one thing to make your life a lot easier that I've discovered is get you a nice pair of thin tip tweezers. You can use on Amazon or eBay. This makes life 100% easier when you're trying to get these screws out and the coupler boxes. So for disassembling the coupler box, all we've really got to do is see where it's angled up, apply some pressure, and we are good to go. So this is the coupler Broadway shipped. It busted a knuckle, so that's doing me a service, making it a lot easier to throw in a KD here in just a little bit. So just for science and a little bit of information, there are some wing tabs inside of the Broadway box. All right, so this is with a KD uh, short shank scale head. It's a little tight once you get it in there and it still has the whiskers, but it is able to pivot just fine. So one coupler box out of the way. Let's get number two. There's a screw. And we're just gonna let this guy chill up here to make life easy. All right, so now for the fun part. I'm gonna try this manually to pull. Yeah, well, this is as I figured, no dice. So now we have one, two, and oh this is gonna be a fun one your rear truck release tabs are actually kind of right over the middle axle so like i was saying earlier with the toothpicks or if you got a flathead you're gonna need to prop them open i'm sure there's a way to squeeze the shell but i've always been kind of hesitant with that and you know it's a lot easier just to poke something in there for a minute pull the shell clear and you'll be good to go so let's figure this out real quick so it looks like there's a little bit of play in the shell so what i'm gonna do Let's come to the engineer side and try to just put a little bit of pressure on here. Yeah, towards the waltway. That's what you're going to want to do. So you're going to take the tab and push out towards the cab. And this is not the most orthodox way, folks. I do recommend doing this with a toothpick if you've got it. So we're just going to take that and prop it. Kind of let that chill beside the handrail. Pick this up. And repeat the process to push it clear. Okay, so the front is going clear. Great. Now for the rear. There we go. I'm taking a little bit of pressure and applying it out towards the walkways. So we got a little bit of a break there. Now we're coming on this side. There we go. Catch and release. And we have liftoff. Beauty. Yeah, y'all pay for the cheap commentary too, so you're getting a little bit of information and good cheap commentary in this video. Alright, so with the light moved over, let's take this thing off and see what we are working with today. And there she blows. Everything's wired in nicely. I've watched the Broadway video, so what we're going to have to do... Let me find my tweezers. I'm going to make this as quick and painless as possible. I've just got to figure out where in the world they located the speaker at on this locomotive. So there's the 
the Broadway tape. We're just going to pull this clear momentarily. And then I'm going to take go under here. This is always a process I recommend doing with a flathead or just tweezers. And we're going to gingerly pressure the dummy plug out. Alright. So what we're going to do going to take our 21 pin. Now this is where I'm not sure quite. The photo is a little different on showing you how to do it. But I'm going to try to finagle this and we're just going to let the wiring kind of chill either on top or to the side. I'm mainly concerned about getting the 21 pin plugged in. And we're just going to figure it out and, and we're just going to make life easy, kind of reroute a few of these wires out of the way and reapply some tape. All right, so as far as that's concerned, we are good to go on the decoder. So you can do this for a lock pilot, lock sound, you know, if you want to go tsunami, you have the option, um, but ESU should be pretty plug and chug on this locomotive. All right, so the decoder is in, now for the fun part with the speaker. This is gonna be a little more involved than I first thought. Uh, essentially, the way this is gonna have to go, you know, here's the speaker cores. There are tabs right here beneath the weight and the chassis where everything's got to sit down flush. And from what I have gathered, the speaker is essentially going to have to go in just like this. I'm going to pull the weight up. So that's just going to require, you know, unscrewing the two over here, pop it up and snap it into place. So a little more involved than I thought, but we're going to see how this guy sounds. Uh, hopefully don't have to do this again, but if scale sounds does come out with another speaker, yeah, we're gonna be in business. <laughs> so let's uh, take a quick dive in here and see what we got to do real quick. Okay, yeah, this should be pretty simple. There are two Phillips head screws right here. You have to get in there at the angle and just pop them up. There's one. And da -da 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 -da. let's get the other side. There is two. So what I just found out messing with this thing, uh, you pull these two screws right here, you can slide the weight to the side, and that's going to reveal two more weights. So this is going to make life a little bit quicker and easier. I say that as I drop the screwdriver. One and two. All right, now we have the weight all the way clear. So now, just being careful and taking our time, making sure I don't have anything on there. We're going to take the speaker, and I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the speaker, we've got our two tabs right here. I'm just going to sit her down. And let the plug kind of do its own thing because that's going to get routed up and through the chassis. And reseat this guy so it just sticks there. While I've got it out here, you can take the wires to the speaker and kind of just run it alongside and underneath the motherboard. Now we are going to take this motor wire, push it clear, All right, take our speaker wire and plug it into the J2 port. Alright, so let's get that J2 port in. There we go, just taking it easy. And she's in. And I'm going to take the motor wire just kind of run it alongside the port and I'll do a test before I put bolt the shell back on and make sure everything's good and two uh, one thing to note that'll be nice uh, just because this locomotive was kind of squeezed in the last minute of the production run all future you know stealth locomotives are gonna come with the speaker the SD40s were the exception you know they said they got so far in development and didn't put it in there um, so if you buy the SD40s this is what you'll deal with uh, luckily going forward they have said you know this isn't going to be an issue because all the new stealth stuff will come with a speaker of varying degrees so that's going to make life much easier but in the meantime when you want to do the SD40s this is what we got to kind of work with a little bit all right so I'm gonna get this back in here one and we'll get number two There she goes. All right, that weight's good. That weight's good. Now we just got to tidy up a little bit at the back and reinstall the two screws back here. There we go. Just kind of angle her in there. And I'll do the other side. And this will virtually wrap up, you know, the speaker installation. 
All right, because I just realized the camera was pointed down when I did that, so essentially all I did was take the blue motor wire, run it through the counterweight, there's a little divot in the motherboard, route it through, and then pick the slack out of the wire here, tighten the tape down, she's good to go. Yeah, so after learning what I just did about the motherboard, you can see there's a little divot. This takes a lot of the slack off the black speaker wire, and I'm going to try to do the same real quick for the red one. I'm just going to get some... It's being very ginger here on the speaker lead. So this guy's got enough space. You can kind of just take it and cram it up under here. Now comes the fun part of buttoning everything up and going from there. Uh, one thing I have found that really helps is to do this upside down when I've done other locomotives because then you can kind of watch the shell and see if you see any wires getting pinched, etc. And then take your tweezers and poke stuff around accordingly, and that's going to make your life a lot easier. Because there's nothing worse than spending time on a locomotive, doing the install, put the shell back on, and then suddenly, whoops, you got to go back and resolder or redo everything. So this is just, you know, a little more peace of mind. And I'm going to make sure that fits, and I think our speaker wire is having a little bit of trouble, so I'm glad that I double-checked that. Off. There we go. All right, she's down. And number two, she is good. All right, make sure that sits down nicely. All right, good, good. Got good pivot, got good pivot. Um, yes, the ride height on these is a little high, I will admit, compared to the Atherns. I mean, if it was slung down a little bit more, that would be better. But I'll give one thing over the Atherns hands down. This thing sits higher. The Atherns all have a slight bow on the front pilot. Got seven of them, they've all got the same thing. So if you see close-ups of my locomotives, like I'm gonna do in another video, you're gonna see that the plow has chunks missing where even code 100 rail will just eat it. All right, so now we got the fun part out of the way. Let's button everything back up and I'll give you my final thoughts on the locomotive as it sits. Uh, overall, just working on this, it wasn't too bad. You know, a little bit of learning. Um, the Broadway video covered a few of the basic steps. The rest of it, you know, like any locomotive, just trial and error and you gotta be patient. Uh, that's the biggest thing. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to try to do this accordingly, our short shank I'm going to experiment with and just see. I may have it in there backwards. Uh, let's see. There we go. So that's tight on the pilot, but it looks good. Bolt her down, and I'll make sure everything looks okay before I get too happy with it. There we go. God, that is 100% better. 100% better than that long shank coupler. And bolt it down. Alright guys, she's done. And of course we'll take the foam off in a minute, but that made life a little easier on the handrails. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, and people are going to ask it, uh, how are the handrails compared to the Athern? The handrails are about dead on. Um, the only thing I've seen a little chunky, the UDE light looks a little big, almost like an old school Details West casting, so it's got a little bit of chunk to it. Um, I'd like to see the airlines routed through the plow, but that's an easy fix you can do yourself. Um, other than that, though, this is a nice little engine. The tread plate looks good. The fans look nice. The lift rings, you know, really nice. So overall, yeah, I mean, even the P3 scaled down. So it's they've made some steps to try to get these right, which I do appreciate. Uh, the armrest is a solid, more solid piece. The windows are metal. They're separate. You know, that's a lot better than the Ather and glue it to the side of the cab and lose it after the first time you run it. <laughs> Ask me how I know that one. <laughs> so overall, yeah, this thing came together pretty good. But um, we're going to take it over to the workbench, to the lock programmer, and see how she does. Alright, so once again, here's the factory auxes, and I'm going to show you guys how I set mine up. Of course, this is the personal taste and the lock programmer. And this is for the SP, so you're going to see how I mapped up the auxes. So once I did a little bit of digging between the manual and just messing with the locomotive, here's roughly what I came up with. Uh, aux 1 is going to be like your top gyro light. Aux 2 will be your cab light. Aux 3 is the UDE emergency light on the nose. Uh, rear class lights, aux 4. Front class, aux 5. Number boards, aux 6. And just like a scale trans locomotive, I tied in the number boards to come in when you press F8. 
and everything else is kind of manual and tie the class lights together. So all in all, it came together really quick. And while we've got the engine sitting here, I'll go ahead and give it the beans. Uh, one thing I've noticed weird about the Broadway speaker, the horn and bell are fantastic. But even if you amp up the prime mover volume, the sound slot is just not want to play nice. So right now, the sound slot for the prime mover is at 173%. The master volume is kicked up to 135%. And this is essentially what you get. So we'll do horn and bell real quick, and then the prime mover. Very strong in that 5T. And prop mover. So the speaker has a little bit of bass, but as you go through the notches, it's just not quite there. And once I get up to the top end. And back down. Alright guys, and there you have it, essentially a quick how-to as I learned on how to do the 21 pin decoder install along with the speaker and the brand new Broadway Limited Stealth Series SD40. So overall, not too bad of a process, I only wish the speaker put out a little bit more for the prime mover, but I'm sure I can play with the sound slots, get a little more volume out of there. Uh, hopefully, you know, scale sounds will come out with a better speaker that'll give us more prime mover and horn sound oomph. In the meantime, this is essentially what you're going to be working with. Not too, too bad. Could have been a little simpler. Um, I'd appreciate it, you know, a little pamphlet in the sound ready model telling you how to do the speaker versus fiddling around for half an hour. But overall, not too bad. This is roughly what you'll look forward to. And naturally, everyone's going to ask the question, how does it stack up to the Athern? Well, I'll happily have that coming in another video. So stay tuned, and I'll see you all in the next one.